Okay, welcome back. This is part 4 of E Lecture 4. And uh, we have a problem here. We have a trolley that's loaded. And let's first draw the free body diagram. And uh, I will draw the beam over here. Now you realize that the wheel is supported at two sides here. So the wheel is from the bottom here. And the load is at the far end of the shaft, so it will be over here. Now let's put in the values. Uh. Yeah, given that the load is loaded with uh, 80 kilo newton, so this will be 80 divided by 2. Uh. And the other, the other half is over here. So the reaction force will be 40 kN, 40 kN. You don't need to do any calculation for this simple beam because it is only single value. There are 40 here, 40 here. So they're equally spaced. So intuitively, you know that it should be 40, 40 yeah, to balance upward force equal to downward force. Huh? Now let's get the one value we need to know is what's the distance from here to here. Here to here. It was given uh, mm -hmm. at here. 115. So basically, I can start working on it now. I say moment equal to force 80 over 2. Because it's kilo newton, I have to multiply by 10 to the power of 3. And the distance is 115 millimeter. That's a moment arm. Now the numbers are too big, I'm not going to calculate it. I'm going to draw the free body diagram now. Just like what you've done earlier, we draw a horizontal line. From forces coming down, we will be four lines. Huh? Now at the end, it is zero. So basically the concepts are similar. What is different from this question over the other one is this. Uh, the force is pushing down. When it's pushing down, it's no longer smiling face. Uh, this will cause the beam to turn this way. In other words, it's going to be negative. So it's negative, so I will just have to draw this value down here. Negative. I know it's going to be a horizontal line here. Very well designed. Uh, it, because we use a lot, uh, uh, the length, uh, a, a big proportion of the sharp uh, diameter is being used to carry the load. Only the end uh, is overdone only. Uh, so, and this value represent here. Again, we like to shade the figure uh, to identify the bending moment. Uh. Otherwise, we draw the lines, it's all lines alone, very difficult to visualize it. We can shade it more. Now, uh, I need to find the diameter of the shaft. Uh, the equation is always given uh, in the formula list that this equation. The equation for this strip, uh, for many moments like this, sigma is equal to 32 m over by d cube. Now uh, we have to be careful with the units when we use this equation. Um, I just want to like um, put it in this way: the length or the diameter. The units will be in millimeter. Then the force. The unit will be in Newton. Then the stress. The unit will be mega pascal or Newton per millimeter square. They are the same. Huh? They are the same. So basically these are the units I need to take care of. Huh? And obviously when you do this your movement movement is force and distance huh? will be Newton millimeter. So now we are given this as 50 
Newton millimeter, so I just put inside this equation, say 50 is equal to 32 times the maximum bending moment, which is from here. 80 over 2, 10 to the power 3, 115 was the moment arm, divided by pi d3. So from here, I get d3. You trust my value here, lah. 370-104 millimeter cube and diameter will be 97.8 millimeter. What it means that uh if I put the diameter that's 97, you'll break. You'll break you yield. So basically Oh my goodness, I realized I missed out this detail here. Uh, so I better write here, d cube is equal to 937104 millimeter cube. D is equal to 97.8 millimeter. I'm sorry, uh, I write it out of the paper. Uh. So basically what it means is this, uh, the sharp diameter has to be bigger than this. So the sharp diameter, if it's 97, it will fail. Diameter 98, it is fine. Any diameter bigger than 97.8 will be a correct diameter using this design concept. Thank you. I'll see you in part 5 of E-Lecture 4.